G'day everyone from around the world. This is Kane from New Zealand. You're watching Trucker Josh Vlogs. Enjoy. Alright Diesel, it's just me and you this trip. Me and you man, two dudes. Let me lower your seat for you there. There you go, good boy. Good boy, all right, so uh, we're gonna get our trailer and we're gonna head down to Hobart, Indiana, which is just pretty much around the Gary, Indiana area. So it goes to say without saying that I'm not gonna be sleeping anywhere near there. But we're gonna go deliver some lumber there during the daylight hours. And then I don't know, I don't have a reload yet. Usually when I'm in that area, I could expect to probably get a, a reload of like those utility trailers maybe, or uh, maybe they'll send me up to Minnesota for some glass. I don't know. We'll see, for now we're just gonna get down there. So today's not gonna be a very long video. Uh, it's just us going to get our load. I'm hooking up and I'm gonna go down to the border. We're gonna stop probably at L'Italier tonight and spend the night there and continue on tomorrow. So we're just getting everything uh, Go in here, making sure we have everything, that I don't have to come back for 10 different things. Phones, wallet, keys, got my GPS, got my phone. Said that already, got my dog, got my weasel. Got the weasel food, got some Christmas cookies from Christmas still that I gotta finish. Britt gave me a mission to finish the Christmas cookies because they're just sitting in the freezer. So I, I, I took on the challenge. I'm a, I'm a good man because I'm trying to be a good husband. So took on the challenge. Bring those a little closer. <laughs> oh, I love sugar. Way too much. Okay. Lights on. Brakes in. Let's go get our load. It's amazing to me how fast these fields come up. Like... Look at that. Can you see it through the window even? Man, all the crops are well on their way. The canola fields are already blooming. My favorite time of year is coming to an end. Any time now. It's gonna feel like any time, you know. Crops will be getting harvested and the first snowfall will be here. I don't mean to depress you with that, but that's kind of exciting because then my absolute, absolute favorite time of year, Christmas time, will be here. It's just after Christmas, I have no use for the rest of winter. But that's a pretty nice sunset over there. That's what makes us feel better. I gotta get my chair fixed, man. I don't know what it is with this thing, but it's a noisy one. So we're we're getting her done. We're not going to get very far today, like I said. Just has to show you how far along the fields were already. We're going halfway, halfway ready to be harvested. So, got my load here. There she be. Load of lumber. Going to Holbert, Indiana. We're going to be uh, avoiding all those crazy Illinois and Indiana tolls as much as we can. 
last month. Uh, had about $500 racked up of Illinois and Indiana tolls. Thank you very much. Greedy. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna tie it down, throw the tarps back here. Giggity goo, we'll be on the road. You know, I've come to realize that I like step decks a whole lot better than a regular flatbed. Look at this deck. It's almost at my, it's pretty much at my neck, right here on my collarbone. Step deck, at least after the, the step, it's like down at my waist. Much easier to do things when the deck is a little lower. <laughs> oh, I'm just being whiny. These tarps are heavy. And I haven't been working for a few days. And I sort of got used to sitting on the beach a little too quickly. Oh, yeah. <sighs> good times, good times. Oh, here, take this for instance. That's my trailer deck there. This is a step deck. Somebody else's trailer. So, uh... You see the difference from here? Camera doesn't do it justice. But here, look. Look, look, look. No, that's not gonna be good. Here, get you there. Okay, look. Below my waist. If I ever bought my own trailer, I think it would be a step deck. Cause you can do everything you can with a flatbed with a step deck, as long as you got risers and stuff. I think step decks are a lot more practical and useful, in my opinion. I mean, depending on what kind of freight you usually haul, I guess. Ah, these mosquitoes. I gotta keep moving. There we go. Ready to rock and roll. All strapped down. Scaled myself on the scale here. We are good to go. Not overweight. I like how the mud flaps are further back on these trailers so that I don't have to worry about ripping them off on a curb. Like when I'm backing into a, a, a parking spot, if the, the mud flaps are too close, they pin between the curb and the wheel, and if you push it too hard, it rips the mud flap right off. So I like this better. Here's our scale right here where I scaled it on. We're sitting at uh, 11,000, well it says zero now, because I'm not on it. I guess that would make sense, wouldn't it? But we're on uh, our, our drive tires, pardon me, my steer tires, 11,900, I'm allowed 12,000 uh, pounds on my drive tires, the two axles on my truck in the back. I'm at 32,500, and on my two axles at the back on the trailer, I'm at about 31,000. So I'm allowed 34,000 on both those groups of axles. So. We're all set, we're ready to go, we're legal. I got all my paperwork to cross the border. We're not gonna cross the border tonight yet. We're gonna do that tomorrow, but we're gonna drive it to L'Italie, right up close to the border and continue our trek south tomorrow. Let's go. And into the night we drove. Actually, we're pulling over for the night already, I'm tired. We're not making it all the way to L'Italie today. We're gonna stop in St. Agath, Manitoba at the famous Flying J. This is that new travel center. Once again, I guess it's not so new anymore, but it did open within the last year. I think it's at a perfect location, but it's never that busy, which is weird, because I thought for sure this was gonna be a great location. I think they just gotta hold on for a little bit. It'll get better, you know? I think it'll get busier as more and more drivers realize this is here. But in the meantime, it's nice to know that there'll always be parking here for me. For now, it's just off to the left. Lots of parking. See, I, I guess I thought it would be busy. Maybe it's just not as busy for parking. 
because this is the intersection where all of the drivers from Steinbeck and all the drivers from Winnipeg will pass by coming up from the US, right? Tons of truck drivers in this area of the country. Tons and tons. But I'm guessing since it's so close to Steinbeck and Winnipeg that the drivers just go home, you know? And they don't stay here the night, which would make sense. I wouldn't stay here the night that often either because usually I would keep going further or I would just go home for the night. But they probably do stop here for fuel and coffees and stuff. So it is probably pretty busy, just not as much for parking. All right, let's see. Let's find a good spot for us to park. Turn our headlights off so we don't shine into people's cabs. A couple of bobtails taking up a couple of good spots here. Don't like that. I think I'm gonna back in just off to the right here. Well, two spots on either side of me. Hmm. All right, now you know what? I'm gonna park one spot over from the Schneider guy. And there we go. So got one spot between me and Kindersley over here. We got three spots between me and that Mack truck over there, so that one more person could park one spot over for me and not be right beside me if he wants to. And I don't get it. You see this this front line over there? He's got his like running lights on there, and this Kindersley truck beside me. They're both idling it. And it is the absolute perfect of perfect nights to not idle your truck. The temperature is perfect. Not too hot, not too cool. It's actually kind of cool, but not cold, you know? That is one thing I just don't understand. On these perfect nights, why not save the fuel and don't idle it? Like, it's perfect outside. Why are you wasting that fuel? Like, I don't care about the fuel being wasted. I care about, like, that. that's money. Then again, they're probably company trucks, you know? So the company is paying for them to just waste this fuel through the night. Each truck burns just under a gallon an hour or uh, about three liters per hour or so. That's, that's approximately how much our trucks use while idling. So let's say uh, it's a, a dollar 25 here, a uh, dollar 25 per liter. And you stay here for 10 hours because you're going down to the US. So 10 hours of idling, dollar 25 times 10 hours, that's $12 and 50 cents. Why does that not seem right? $1.25 times three, because you burn three liters per hour times 10. There you go, $37.50 per hour. Canadian, that you're burning, that this guy's burning here. $37.50 for no reason. I'm gonna shut my truck off and I'm gonna wake up in the morning $37.50 richer than that guy or that guy. Tell you what, and I do that every night. I'm on the road for what, 25 nights a month? Let's do the math. 37.50 times 25 nights, that's $937.50 at the end of the month. In my pocket, that's not in their pockets, or should I say, not in their boss's pockets because they're driving company trucks. I drive my own truck. So I gotta pay for my own fuel. $937.50! Shut your truck off on nights like this. I can understand why uh, uh, some people would idle it, obviously, through the really hot nights. Like, when I go down to the south, I haven't been down there in so long, I miss the south so much, but when you, when I go down there, even at, like, the coolest part of the night, it's, it'll, it, I feel like I'm dying, like I'm melting where I'm sitting, because it's so hot. Yeah, I idle my truck there so that the air conditioning keeps going. I understand that. Or through the winter here in Manitoba when it gets down to minus 50. You don't want to shut your truck off for night because you're not even going to be able to turn that engine over in the morning because it, it'll freeze solid. So there are times, a lot of times, when you want to idle your truck, right? So I don't blame people for doing that. But on a night like this, $37.50 in my pocket. Man, if he likes wasting money so much, you think he'd just like wake up and give me like a $50 bill? Maybe just 40 bucks? I'll just go over to his window, hey, since you're uh, throwing around money so so easily, got an extra 40 bucks for me? You obviously had an extra 40 bucks to throw into the air throughout the night. Uh, you got another 40 for me? 
You think it'll work? <laughs> like, come on, people. <laughs> And you know, that's why our companies get so mad at us, not our companies. That's why the companies get so mad at us drivers, because there's people who do this kind of thing. Money, 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 money. It's what it's all about. Money, 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 money. I'm going to start, uh, well, not right away, but I, I'm going to put a driver on my trucks eventually, right? I want to get a, another truck or two and, uh, you know, maybe I'll advertise through my YouTube channel at that time. I don't know, but uh, I want to hire drivers to drive for me, right? Uh, drive my truck, keep them moving, and I want to move on to bigger things and, you know, just thing. If I found out that the drivers I hired were throwing $40 of my, of my money in fuel out the exhaust pipe, on a night like this, 40 bucks of my money, they wouldn't be my driver for very much longer. <laughs> Tell you that much. Don't get me wrong, I'd have a forgiving spirit. I, I would have I would have mercy. I would be a good boss, a boss of grace and mercy. But uh, you keep doing that over and over? No, I'll find someone else who knows how to shut the truck off. It's not that hard. It's right on the steering column. You just turn it counterclockwise and there you go you saved me 40 bucks <laughs> all right I gotta get my bed ready here oh and I gotta walk the weasel diesel you want to go inside oh, yes you do yes you do you've already had supper at home so I know you're not hungry all right guys uh, I'm gonna walk weasel and then I will touch base with you before going to bed what's funny is his company already puts like the uh, the skirts on their trailers there and also these like hubcaps on their rims, that's to save fuel. They also, you can't see it from here, but they're, uh, they're mud flaps. The mud flaps behind the uh, truck are, uh, what do you call it, like a mesh, so the air can flow through it better. That's also to save fuel. And you know, they also went with uh, the Kenworth T680, which is a beautiful truck, really good on fuel. They, the company obviously bought that truck because of its fuel economy put the skirts on the trailer to get better fuel economy the hubcaps the mud everything they went the whole nine yards to save fuel and then the guy just idles it all night and just ruins it all just blows all that money that they just saved <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful day out here it's a beautiful day I don't understand some people I don't get it but this is what I mean you see can you see it here you see how my mud flaps are all the way back there not here. See if the mud flap was here, like uh, like on his trailer there. It's so dark. I know you guys can't really see. Uh, maybe if we went to the other side. We've got a light over there. You can see a little better. You see that trailer there? Like a normal trailer has the mud flaps right behind the wheels, right? And if he bumps the curb, it could rip the mud flaps off. But for me, uh, it still isn't the greatest lighting. Since my mud flaps are way at the back, they don't rip off when I bump the curb. You just gotta be careful because these trailers have like a big rear end that hangs over. Make sure you don't hit the fence. There's people who back into the fence all the time for crying out loud. <laughs> Jeez. I don't get people. I don't get people, but whatever. There's seven billion of us on this planet. There's always a few weird ones. All right, Diesel, hold on. Hold on, buddy. Wait. That freight liner across there. I don't know if you can hear it from here, but he's got it on like high idle too. So he's probably burning like five liters per hour, which is even more. Come on, dude. Come on, bud. Let's quickly take care of business and let's go to bed. You want to know how to tell? Or how you tell that Flying J is a American, an American company. There's no French on their signs anywhere. You'll never find French on their signs. Only English. And this is St. Agath. This is a French town. And by law, everything in this municipality is supposed to have both English and French. I guess Flying J got out of it. I heard that Flying J was kicked out of Quebec in a lot of places because they refuse to put French on their signs. And in Quebec, it's actually law that you have to have French only on your signs, or you could have English, but it has to be a certain font size smaller than the French. 
So the French has to be like really big and the English, you can have English really small in there. They're, they're uh, like language police. They actually have language police in Quebec. They're very proud to be French. Le Français. Québécois. They want to separate. I say let them go. Why not? Want to be your own country? Good for you. Huh? I love Quebec. I'm not going to stop them from doing what they want to do. Quebec is fun to go and visit and it really feels like a different country because like I said, they have literal language police there to make sure that everything stays different than the rest of Canada. Even their construction signs and their construction cones are different colors and shapes and all their road signs are different shapes and you can just tell that it's different. <laughs> but now that I'm seeing other businesses here, they're just English as well. You know, maybe it's a, a private business thing. Since Flying J is a, a private business here, maybe they don't have to have French on their signs. Maybe that's the reason. I don't know. It's sort of changed. You know, when it was when I was a kid already, it was sort of wearing off a little bit. But you know, in like my grandparents' day, like Steinbach was a German town. Saint Agathe and the surrounding areas like Saint Pierre. Uh, there's St. Malo, St. Anne, all the saints. You know, they always named their towns after saints because the French were Catholic. And they named their towns after Catholic saints. So there's St. Genevieve, there's uh, St. Jean Baptiste, there's, uh, what else is there? There's other French towns, uh, St. Anne. They're not all named after saints, but, uh, oh, oh, there's uh, St. Laurent. Uh, can't think of any more right now, but a lot of French towns are named after uh, Catholic saints. But that's how it was, like in my grandparents' day, like this was a French owned, like French area, French, French. But uh, now it's all sort of, we've all sort of just blended together, I guess. Now we're just Canadian. It's been long enough that we're all just, all just Canadian now. Sorry, right, bud. Good boy. I've got my screens in the windows. Hopefully that'll be enough. It is a little warm out there, but it's still a pretty perfect night, so. Got everything I need right here. Gonna surf the net for a little bit. Check out Facebook, watch some YouTube. And head to bed. Thanks for tuning in with me. It's been a short little day, but tomorrow will be a full day. We're not quite gonna make it to our destination, so. Uh, I want to make it to at least Black River Falls, Wisconsin tomorrow. We'll see what happens. I hope you tune in, hit that like button, and subscribe. There's still about 39% of you who watch my videos who aren't subscribed yet. Go ahead, take the plunge. Join the rest of the group. We're trying to get the channel up to 100,000 subscribers. You're watching TJV with Trucker Josh and his sidekick, Diesel. Enjoy the show.